Okay, in this video we're going to subtract mixed numbers uh, using borrowing, okay? And here's page one, we'll just do an introduction and some examples. And uh, page two is the, these ex four examples, page three, just this example, page four, these two examples, and page five, uh, find the difference between these numbers, okay? So we'll start with page one, <coughs> and we'll just... We just want you to draw three circles the same size, and we're imagine there are three pizzas. So here's one circle, here's another circle, here's another circle. So please draw those, okay? Put a dot in the middle of each circle, in the center, I mean, okay? All right. Now just put a line down here and here, like that. So get to there. And now we're going to uh, split it into thirds, okay? So we're cutting these circle pieces into three pieces. Uh, so they're Tonys, they're not that big, right? Small pieces, right? Okay, so we've split them into thirds. Now, what I want to make sure we all completely understand is that we have three pizzas. So I'm going to represent the three. I'm going to imagine the pizza is like one, like the number one. So uh, three pizzas is the number three. So we have three pizzas, the number three, right? How many thirds is is three equal to for fun? How many thirds can I get out of that? Three equals what over three, in other words? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine thirds. Agreed? So just for fun, it's equal to nine thirds. Another way of looking at the number three is you could say three equals two whole, or let's say one whole pizza, okay, this whole pizza, right, plus how many thirds? So three equals one whole pizza, three pizzas equals one whole pizza, for fun, if you imagine you didn't split that one up, and then how many thirds besides? One, two, three, four, five, six, right? Six thirds, that makes sense, doesn't it? Okay, and you know, that can be written, one plus six thirds can actually be written like this as a mixed number, one and six thirds, can't it? Yep, that's, that's correct. Um, uh, another way of doing it is just for fun. This is just to, to really get our brains into, into thinking about this. Three is equal to two whole pizzas plus, plus what? Plus how many thirds? So imagine you didn't split these two up and you just split this one up. So it's two whole ones plus how many thirds? One, two, three. Agreed? And as a mixed number, how can you write that? Do you have to put the plus sign there? No, you can just write right down, write down, two and three thirds, right? Okay, so uh, that's that, and uh, th th that's something we, we're, we're need, not going to need to do. So let's uh, take uh, some square pizzas, okay? And we'll imagine they're uh, uh, big, although, of course, they're not big on your page. But we'll just draw three square pizzas, just for fun, okay? Okay, so I want to split these guys first of all into halves, right? And now we'll split them into quarters just for fun. So we'll do that. So they're all split into quarters, right? And now just for fun, I'm also going to split them um, a second time. Split them up and down like that, okay? All right, so how many pieces is that now? We just split it into four and then we split it again, so that's got to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So these are big pieces, we're splitting them into eights, okay? So every pizza gives you eight pieces, right? Imagine. So um, the number three, my question to you, is how many eights? How many eights have I, how many little pieces have I actually made all together? So, I mean, because I'm mean, going to imagine that each, each pizza is one. This is one, this is one, this is one, right? So, if I add them together, that's three holes. So, three holes now have been split into how many eights? Definitely. 
Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Another 8 is 16. And 16 plus 8 is? It's got to be 24, right? Okay. So, imagine that I only split these two up and I kept this one whole. So, 3 equals 1 whole plus how many 8s? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And another eight. Eight and eight is sixteen, isn't it? Write that as a mixed number. One and sixteen eighths, right? And three, imagine I I kept two of them whole. So two whole pizzas plus so these two are kept whole and I just split this one up. Okay, so I, I didn't split these. Imagine I just split this one up. So it's two and how many eights? Write it down. Two and how many eights? Two and eight eights, isn't it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eights. And write that as a mixed number. Two and eight eights. Okay. So Obviously, 8 over 8 is 1. I mean, we just have 2 plus 1. 2 and 1 is 3. 16, what's 16 over 8? That has to, that's just 2. This is 1 plus 2, isn't it? 1 plus 2 is 3, right? 24 over 8 is what? 3, right? Anyway. Okay, so I hope we're, we're getting the hang of things. Anyway, if, if you think about money now, okay? Let's imagine you have um, $4. $4 equals three dollars and how many quarters? How many quarters? Three you can take your four dollar notes and split it into just having three quarters and how many or three dollars and how many quarters? Four quarters, right? So do do this. Do uh um, let's say if you had nine dollars, that's equal to eight dollars and how many quarters? Well, it's got to be eight dollars and write down four quarters, right? Let's say we want to get dimes, tenths. A dime is a tenth of a dollar. So let's say two dollars equals one dollar and how many dimes? How many tenths? Ten tenths, right? Or how about um, seven dollars? That's equal to six dollars and how many tenths? Once again, ten tenths, isn't it? Okay, so just just to, to understand, this is the the uh, first one of the steps we're going to have to make when we're uh, using borrowing, and so we're hopefully not confused. Um, so imagine if I wanted to do eight take away three and three fifths. There's a little problem there. I mean, eight take away three is five, but I still have to also take away the three fifths. Okay, so just go ahead and try and do that right away. In fact, what I'd suggest is for you to press pause and just go ahead and try and solve this by yourself. How would you do this? Go ahead and guess. Go ahead and figure out some way of doing it. Eight minus three fifths. Okay, press pause and do it yourself. Okay, now now I hope you're ready. I'm going to do it. And um, one. Uh, there's, there's a, a different ways of doing it, but one way of doing it is to take this number 8 and say that that is equal to 7 and how many fifths? 7 and how many fifths? 7 and? What, 7 plus 1 is 8, or 7 and 5 fifths? Does that make sense? That's just what we were practicing earlier, right? 7 and 5 fifths is the same as 8, isn't it? Okay, now I'm going to subtract the 3 uh, and 3 fifths. Okay, so I'm just going to subtract 3 and 3 fifths and see what I get. Okay, so I've borrowed. Eight, going from 8 to 7 and 5 fifths is called borrowing. <laughs> Turning one of the units into 5 fifths. So 7 minus 3, of course, is 4. And the 5 fifths will subtract the 3 fifths. 5 minus 3 is 2, so 2 fifths, and then that's the answer, 4 and 2 fifths, right? Okay, how about this guy? 13 minus 4 and 7 tenths. Press pause and try it yourself. Okay, now I'm going to do it slowly, and I'm going to turn the 13 
I'm gonna borrow. So call. So I'm gonna go twelve and how many tenths? Or in other words, twelve dollars and how many dimes? Twelve dollars and ten dimes, isn't it? Same thing, right? And I'm gonna subtract the four and seven tenths. Okay. Now, of course, ten is greater than seven, so I can subtract this, can't I? Right. So twelve minus four is eight. 10 minus 7 is 3, so 8 and 3 tenths, or 8 dollars and 3 dimes, and that's the answer, right? So 13 dollars take away 4 and 7 dimes leaves you with 8 dollars and 3, or uh, 4, yeah, and uh, 3 dimes, right? Yep. So how about this guy? Um, 6 and a quarter minus 4 and 3 quarters. Okay. This is interesting. Six minus three is three, but one quarter won't subtract three quarters because this is bigger. So we have a problem. Now, with this one, go ahead and press pause and see what you might do. Because if you come up with it all by yourself, uh, that's the best way because it means you'll definitely remember. So press pause and see what you might do with this. Just mess with it, play with it, and see what you come up with. Okay, I ho hope you're ready. I'm going to do it now. So, one way of doing it is to take the 6 and just forget about this quarter for now. Just take the whole number 6 and turn the whole number 6 into 5. And how many quarters? And remember, I'm just I'm forgetting about everything else. I'm just taking 6 is equal to 5 and what? How many quarters? four quarters, right? And I know to, to use quarters because everything is in quarters here. So the six and one quarter becomes five and four quarters and the one quarter. Does that make sense? This whole six, because the six turned into five and four quarters, but I still have to add on one quarter, right? So my point is that whole thing now becomes five and then if I add these quarters together, five and five quarters. Does that make sense? The whole six and one quarter becomes five and four quarters plus the one quarter, which is five and five quarters, right? That makes sense though, doesn't it? Because if you had six dollars and one quarter, that would be equal to five dollars and five quarters, wouldn't it? You would change one of the dollar bills into four quarters, and you would add that to your already one quarter, and you would have five dollars and four and five quarters, right? You're just getting change. You're borrowing. Or you're, cha you're getting change, you could call it. So now I'm going to subtract the three and three quarters, and everything will be hunky dory. Because five will subtract three. It, okay, so uh, five holes minus three holes is two holes. Five quarters take away three quarters is two quarters. And that worked. Now, is that the final answer, or can I do something else to simplify the answer? Do I need to simplify that? Yep, that's two, but look, two quarters becomes two into two goes once, two into four goes twice, two and one half. So I've got to put my answer in lowest terms if needed, right? Now by all means press pause and do this guy by yourself and then check the answer, okay? It's, it's really beneficial to figure these out for yourself. So press pause and try it. Okay, now I'm going to try it. I have four and one sixth minus two and five sixths. Four minus two will give me two, but the problem is one sixth will not subtract five sixths, right? So I've got to do some borrowing or getting change or whatever you want to call it. Now I'm going to take this whole number four and I'm going to get some sixths out of that to help me subtract the five sixths over there. So the number four, and forgetting about everything else, if I just look at the number four, okay? The number four is equal to three and how many sixths? Three and how many sixths? Isn't it three and six sixths, right? But, okay, so four and one sixth is three and three sixths plus this one sixth as well, isn't it? Making I can add the six, six six and one sixth is seven sixths, isn't it? And I still have the whole number three. So three and seven sixths, okay? 
and I'm subtracting 2 and 5 sixths. Well, that's going to work now. 2 and 5 sixths. Watch this. Hey, that's going to work, isn't it? 3 minus 2 is 1. 7 sixths minus 5 sixths is 2 sixths. And is that the final answer, or do I always, don't I always have to put fractions in lowest terms? Always have to simplify your answer as much as possible. So you got to put that in lowest terms. What's that in lowest terms? 2 into 2 goes once, 2 into 6 goes 3 times, and I have 1 and 1 third. Yep. Okay. So move on to page 3 now. And on page 3, I have this problem. And the difference is now that I don't have the same denominator. Uh-oh. So my first step is going to be what? And by the way, you know, by all means, mess with, press pause in the video and play with this and see what you come up with. Okay? Try and figure it out for yourself. There's a challenge for you. Figure it out for yourself. See what you get. Okay, now I'm going to give it a go. <clears throat> now the first thing I'm going to do before anything else is I'm going to make the bottoms the same. I'm going to find a lowest common denominator. So make the bottoms the same. Uh, I guess I'll just write that down. I don't know uh, any other. So the first step is make bottoms the same. Or, or you could say, you know, use the lowest common denominator or whatever you want to call it. Okay, and then the second step is going to be uh, the same as everything else. But the, make the bombs the same. So my point is, okay, this is fifths, this is tenths. Now what's a common multiple of five and ten? What's the lowest common multiple or lowest common denominator? It's ten, isn't it? Because five goes into ten and ten also goes into ten. So to turn a five into a ten I need to multiply it by <coughs> multiply it by Five times what gives ten? Five times two, right? Multiply top by two as well, though. So I'm going to start out by having ten and two tenths minus three and seven tenths. So that's the first step. What you need to notice uh, as we go through math is that laying things out nice and neatly is half the battle. I mean, if you make one mistake in math, you're wrong. And so one of the things you need to learn and, and I hope these videos are going to get you to practice writing things neatly, step by step by step. And if each step is correct, your answer will be correct. Okay, so that's part of the 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 uh, challenge. Okay, so now hold on a second. Okay, ten minus three is seven, but but hold on a second. Two tenths will not subtract seven tenths, right? Now at least our bottoms are the same, so that's a good thing. But now I'm back to problems I was doing earlier. I'm gonna. I have the same denominators, that's good, but 2 won't subtract 7, so I've got to borrow from the 10 or get change from the $10, right? So forget about everything else now, and $10 gives you uh, $9 and how many dimes? $9, so if you're getting change, $10 is $9 and how many dimes? 10 dimes, okay, I got change, great. But I also have to add on the two dimes, don't I? Because ten and two dimes is the same as nine dollars and ten dimes plus the two dimes, which gives nine dollars and how many dimes? Twelve dimes. So ten and two dimes is the same thing as nine dollars and twelve dimes. Now that that makes sense, doesn't it? Right? And now I need to subtract the 3 and 7, 10, 7 dimes. So I'm going to put that underneath there, because that's going to work. Because look, 12 is bigger than 7, right? So it's going to be subtract 3 and 7 dimes. Okay, this is going to work out great. So 9 minus 3 is 6. 12 dimes minus 7 dimes is, or 12 tenths minus 7 tenths is 5 tenths, isn't it? And am I done? Or do, can I simplify the answer? That is equal to 6 and simplify 5 tenths. Put it in lowest terms. 5 into 5 goes once. 5 into 10 goes twice. 
six and one half. Yep. So the final answer is six and a half. So step by step by step. The first step was we made the bottoms the same. Okay. Then we got change, or we borrowed. Or got change, I don't know, whatever whatever helps you remember. <laughs> okay. So that was step number two, we got change. Step number three was, you know, we just we we subtracted. That we, we just carried on with subtracting. So um the you you we uh, for the other ones we just had to borrow and then subtract. As complete, the most complicated it's going to become is the first step. You'll have to make the bombs the same, or find the lowest common denominator. Then you'll have to borrow, and then you'll have to subtract. So lowest common denominator, borrow, subtract. That's your three steps, right? All righty. So let's have a look at uh, the next page, page four, and I have seven and a sixth minus two and um, two thirds. Now. Which is bigger, two thirds or one sixth, and which is smaller? Which would you prefer, two thirds? Of a, I mean, which would uh, which would be more food, two thirds of a pizza or just one sixth? Two thirds is more, isn't it? And one sixth is less. So I can't subtract. I can't go one sixth minus two thirds because because this one sixth is smaller. So I do have to borrow. But hold on a second. I have a problem. Look, my my denominators are different anyway, and so. No matter what, I'd like you to follow these steps. It's going to be the easiest thing of all is going to be following these steps. And the first step is to just go ahead and get a lowest common denominator, make the volumes the same, right? So I want to, uh, and so just ignore the kind of, just kind of ignore the uh, the whole numbers for now. Just make the volumes the same. So I've got six and thirds. What's the lowest common denominator or the lowest common multiple? Let's see. It's got to be well. 6, right? 3 goes into 6, 6 goes into 6, right? So I already have 6 here, so 7 and 1, 6, that's fine, okay? 2, and now I just have to turn the, turn turn these thirds into sixths. So what do you multiply 3 by to get 6? 3 times 2, right? And also multiply the top by 2. So 3 times 2 is 6, 2 times 2 is 4, so 2 and 4 six. Okay, so Great. First step is done. I have got lowest common denominator. Now I'm going to borrow because look, one sixth won't subtract four sixths. So I've got to borrow or get some change from the seven. Okay. So go ahead and do that. Seven equals six, and how many sixths? Six and six and six sixths, right? But I also have the one sixth to add on, right? So the seven and one sixth becomes six and six sixths plus the one sixth, so that is six and seven sixths, right? And now I can subtract this guy. Subtract two and four sixths. What does that give me? Six minus two is four, right? Um, seven minus four, seven sixths minus four sixths, three sixths. Yep. And can you simplify that answer? Can you put that fraction in lowest ter terms? Four and three to three goes once. Three to six goes twice. So I've got four and one half. Okay, let's have a look at this guy. Eight and a quarter minus five and a third. By all means, press pause, try it yourself, see if you get the same answer as me. Or you can race me and see if you get it before I do. Or you can just, I'll go as slow as possible to give everyone a chance to learn, okay? Now, um, Hold on a second. No matter what, I don't have the same denominator. So I mean that, like I need. I'm going to make the bottoms the same no matter what, just so I can totally compare these fractions together, right? So I'm going to um, 
get a lowest common denominator. Now I've got quarters and thirds. So if I look at the multiples of say four, four, eight, three doesn't go into eight, uh, twelve, does three go into twelve? Yep. And of course four goes into twelve, right? So three times what gives twelve? And four times what gives twelve? Well, three times four is twelve, so multiply this guy by four over four, and he becomes five and four twelfths. All right, so I gotta subtract him. Now, this guy, you gotta multiply him by what to give twelve? Four times what is twelve? Four times three, right? And multiply the top by three as well. Okay, so this is of course eight and. 1 times 3 is 3, and 4 times 3 is 12. 8 and 3 twelfths. Now I can clearly see what I've got. 8 minus 5 is 3, but look, 3 twelfths subtract 4 twelfths. Oh, that's not going to work, right? So I do need to borrow. So, if I get change from the 8, or borrow, I'm going to have 7, and how many twelfths? So just forget about everything else. Just look at the uh, 8. 8 gives you 7 and how many twelfths? 7 and 12 twelfths, right? And you've also got the uh, 3 twelfths plus 3 twelfths. So this whole thing becomes 7 and 12 twelfths plus 3 twelfths, which is 7 and 15 twelfths, right? And I've got to subtract 5 and four twelfths. Okay. So do you see how important it is to be right neatly and just go step by step by step and give yourself lots of space? Because if you make a mistake here, you know, the whole thing is wrong. You don't want to do that. Okay. So if you're going to do something, you might as well do it right. Just be nice and neat. Take your time. So seven minus five is two. Fifteen twelfths minus four twelfths is 11 twelfths. And can I simplify the answer? Go ahead and simplify that if you can. Well, if you can, you know more than me. I can't. That cannot be simplified further, right? So it's 2 and 11 twelfths. Okay, so last page is find the difference between 3 and 1 eighth and 1 and 1 sixth. So please press pause and try that yourself. Okay, so difference between means we need to subtract. We need to take the first number and subtract the second number. So 3 and 1 eighth minus 1 and 1 sixth. Okay? Now, <coughs> we don't have a common denominator. So nothing is going to work with subtracting uh, fractions until we have a common denominator. Okay? So let's find the lowest common denominator and um, between eighths and sixths, so by all means press pause and try and get it. Okay, now I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to write down multiples of eight. Eight, sixteen, six doesn't go into sixteen, and then twenty-four, right? Does six go into twenty-four? Yep. And of course eight goes into twenty-four. So there's my lowest common denominator. So what do I multiply six by to get twenty-four? six times four isn't it? Right. Okay, so this one sixth becomes four twenty fourths. Okay. On the eighths then, how do we turn eighths into twenty fourths? Right? So I'm gonna turn the eighths into twenty fourths. Times it by what? Times it by three, right? So times this guy by 3 over 3. So 1 8 becomes 3 24 1 6 becomes 4 24 And then just fill in the rest of the problem, the whole numbers. Okay. So of course, 3 minus 1 is 2, but 3 24 will not be able to subtract 4 24 So now we know whether we need to um, take the next, for sure, whether we need to take the next step and borrow or not, or, or get change. 
Okay, so or you could have saying that look, one eighth is not going to is smaller than one sixth. I mean, but 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 you can certainly see that now. You definitely need to borrow. Okay, so we're going to borrow or get change from the three, and that's going to be two, and how many watts? Two and twenty four twenty fourths, right? So it's about taking your time and just writing everything out. You know, don't be afraid to writing more is usually better than writing less. I know some of you guys will like to do all this in your head, but if you make one mistake in your head, then you get the wrong answer and you get no points. So if you're going to do something, you might as well make sure you're doing it correctly, especially when you're taking a test. You know, so it's a good good habit, and you'd, you'd be surprised that you'd actually save time. I, I know I know I'm talking slowly, going slowly, but writing it out carefully will actually be faster in the long run than uh, writing it out quickly, uh, or, or than, than skipping steps and trying to do everything in your head. Okay, anyway, so we've got 2 and 27 set 20 fourths, then minus 1 and 4 20 fourths. Okay. Now 2 minus 1 is 1, that minus that is 23 20 fourths. Does that simplify? Nope, so that's the answer.